Hey guys, it's Darwin. So today I wanted to talk about five pieces of gear that I wish that I had had when I started my through hike of the Appalachian Trail. So as backpackers, we are constantly evolving our gear and figuring out what works for us, figuring out lighter options and more efficient pieces of gear on the trail. And that's totally cool. I do it all the time. I'm constantly switching out gear. Today, I kind of wanted to talk about five pieces of gear that I now use that I wish that I had known about and I wish that I had brought with me when I started my through hike of the Appalachian Trail in 2015. So there's tons of different types of gear that I wish that I would have had obviously out on the trail, like maybe a lighter pack, maybe a different tent, a different cook system that I'm now using. But this is just five pieces of gear that probably would have made my hike a little more efficient than I'm now using on the trail. So number one is a pillow. So in 2015, whenever I set out to hike the AT, um, I thought, who needs a pillow? I don't need a pillow. I'll just take my down jacket, I'll stuff it up or use my clothes bag and I'll sleep on that. And I did that all of 2015. I actually kind of made fun of people that carried these things, thought that they were goofy. I didn't want to blow one up. It just seemed like a worthless piece of gear to me. So in 2016, when Snuggles and I returned to the Appalachian Trail, I was just kind of interested in one of these. And as much as I had bashed them, I kind of figured I, I might as well put my money where my mouth is. And I decided to grab one just to test it out on the trail. And let me tell you what, this helped me get better sleep than I've ever gotten. So all of 2015 out on the trail, I used a down jacket. Um, and the down jacket that I used was a Marmot Zeus down jacket, which is awesome because it folds up in its own pocket and kind of becomes a little bit of a pillow. And I got pretty decent sleep. The problem with the down jacket is over time, especially laying on it, it starts to compress and get a little bit flatter. Sometimes I even used my clothes bag, just stuffed a bunch of stuff in that and used that as a pillow. And I got pretty decent sleep. In 2016, when I picked up the Sea to Summit Eros pillow and took it out there, I got way better sleep than I've ever gotten on the trail, which obviously getting better sleep and better rest promoted better hiking. Now as light as this damn thing is and as small as it compacts down, this is totally worth it to me. And I will never go hiking without one of these pillows again. And simply just because it gave me better sleep. And when you're doing something like hiking from four to six months every single day, you want to make sure that you're good and rested and that you can put those miles out to where you're not wearing your body down as hard. So if I had to turn back time and start my through hike over again, I'd be bringing one of these guys. The second piece of gear that I wish that I had started the Appalachian Trail with was a different stove. So when Snuggles and I set out to hike the AT in 15, we had been using a jet boil. So what we had done was we, we took our jet boil, we got one of those adapter pot rings, and then we got one of those big cook pots because we figured there's two of us, so we're gonna need this big cook pot to be able to do a lot of boiling and cook food for both of us. Now we had also carried our Snow Peak mugs and it worked for a handful of weeks. By the time we got to Hiawassee, Georgia, which really isn't that far in, we realized how insanely overkill that jet boil system was. Jet boils are great. They're super efficient at boiling water fast, but man, that is a lot of gear, especially when you're using that little cook pot. So what we ended up switching out to is we sent that guy home. And by the time we got to Hot Springs, North Carolina, I picked up a Snow Peak Light Max. So since we already had our titanium mugs that we could cook out of and eat out of, we just picked one of these up, shed the weight like tenfold and made a much more efficient cook system. So now when I'm out on the trail, there's no way I would ever use a jet boil. Again, jet boils are great at what they do. They're just kind of overkill if you're doing long distance hiking and just needing something super small, super efficient and super lightweight. But from now on, I'll always just carry a small canister stove if I'm going to be cooking on the trail. The third piece of gear that I would totally be starting with if I had to redo my hike of the AT is a gravity feed system. So there's tons of different filters that you can use and tons of different ways to purify your water out on the trail. If you choose to use something like a Sawyer Squeeze, they're great. They're super efficient, they're super lightweight. You can filter 100,000 gallons of water through them. But when you're stopping like four or five times a day, 
every day for months on end and you're filling up these little squeeze bags um, with just a little bitty hole on the top, it can kind of become a little bit annoying. So something that I ended up doing in 2015, about a month in on the trail, was picking up a gravity feed system. So just picking up one of these platypus uh, gravity bags, this dirty bag, and then this hose, and then I was just able to connect this hose to the back of my Sawyer, connect it to this, and let gravity do the work for me. And it was much more efficient on tons of different levels. Number one, I could sit at camp, hook this up to like a nail on the shelter and just put my filter in my bottle and just let gravity do the work and fill it up. So I wasn't sitting there squeezing those bags out and taking all that time to do that. And then the second big efficient thing about going to the system was just collecting water. So whenever you're using those Sawyer bags, you just kind of have this little bitty tiny hole at the top to be able to get it under a water source. And sometimes it's kind of a pain in the ass because you just have this little bitty trickle or sometimes you have a really shallow pool and trying to dip that down and collect water can totally suck. So by having this big mouthed gravity feed bag that has this big collection hole on it, I was actually able just to take it and dip it down into water, collect all that water at one time, and get to filtering much faster. So not only is it more efficient at filtering water, but it's way more efficient at collecting water, which definitely saves you time and aggravation when you're out on the trail. So I would definitely be taking a gravity feed system or something similar if I was going to be doing that through hike again. So the fourth piece of gear that I would definitely take if I was doing another through hike of the AT is not necessarily a piece of gear, but something that you definitely need, and that is a guide. So in 2015, we carried the AWOL guide, which is a great guide for hiking the AT. It has really good information on towns, water stops, elevation, shelters. So definitely suggest getting that if you want to use a paper guide, but if I had to hike that trail again, I would be using my phone. So now we have tons of different apps that we can throw right on our phone. And for carrying our phone anyways, there's no real need to carry a big, thick paper guide anymore. So what I now use when I hike a trail and what I'm going to be using for my 2018 PCT through hike is the Gut Hook app. The Gut Hook app is great. So it pretty much takes that big paper guide and it puts it right on your phone. And it uses GPS, so it's much more accurate than that book. You know, the thing with the book is whenever you're hiking, you kind of have to figure out exactly where you're at, looking for certain landmarks like a shelter or maybe a certain water spot to know exactly where you are on your mileage, where on the app, it's precise because it's using GPS. And since you have your phone anyways, you might as well put it on there. Now, not only is there the Gut Hook app, which is a great app and it's the one that I use, but from what I understand, AWOL has actually made a PDF file that you can load right onto your phone as well. So instead of carrying that big bulky book that you have to tear pages out, you have to find a place to put and keep waterproof, the app is much better all the way. So if I had to do a through hike of the AT again, I would definitely be using the Gut Hook app or an app like it on my phone versus carrying that big thick book. The fifth and final piece of gear that I really, really wish that I would have had when I did my through hike of the AT in 2015 is a camera. Now, Snuggles and I carried a cell phone, which are great too, and now cell phones have like amazing cameras in there, but I wish that we would have had a better camera like the GoPro or something like what I'm now using, the Canon G7X Mark II, just because shooting footage is kind of important to me. Number one, not only to make these YouTube videos, but also just because I love looking back at amazing video from the trail. Now, I'm a big time cinematographer. I love shooting video, and that might not be for everyone. And most people can do most of their video shooting on a cell phone. The cell phone that Snuggles and I carried in 15 wasn't that great, so we didn't really want to shoot video with it just because it couldn't really capture that. But I just really wish that I would have had a standalone camera that could shoot good footage so I had that to look back on. And not only to look back on, but also whenever I make videos for you guys and I go back to look at my footage to find B-roll, to insert that into my videos, all I have from 2015 are still pictures. And they're great still pictures, but sometimes I just wanna show you guys video. I don't really have that. So having a good camera and shooting that trail is definitely important to me. Again, even if you don't wanna carry a standalone camera, you can at least shoot some good video on a good cell phone if you have one, which most people do. But if I was going to be through hiking the AT one more time, I would definitely make sure that I had a really good camera on me so I could get some smoking footage.
Obviously that's gear that not everyone's gonna wanna take with them. That was just a list of the things that I wish that I would have had whenever I started my through hike of the AT. And if I was gonna do it again, I would definitely make sure I had with me at the start of the trail. So what are some pieces of gear that you wish you would have had at the start of a trail? Leave it in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts. If you haven't had a chance yet, go over and check me out on Instagram. I've been posting a lot of new photos lately of some of the things that Snuggles and I have going on throughout the week plus some pictures from some past hikes, so go check those out. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and as always guys, thanks for watching.